Hi everyone, welcome to the Ashley Barlow Company podcast. I'm Ashley Barlow, your host. If you are a parent, a teacher or someone who works at a school, or you're a community member, a volunteer or a staff member at an organization that supports people with special education plans, a coach, a tutor, or even a grandparent, you're in the right place. Sit back with an ice cold glass of lemonade, put on your walking shoes and grab some headphones, roll down the windows and cruise. Ready, set, go. Educate, advocate, collaborate. Welcome back to Special Education Advocacy with Ashley Barlow. I'm Ashley Barlow, and I am so happy you're here. Oh, boy. So, it is. Let's see, the middle of July. I'm batch recording these, and so I had to think about what the publication date was um, for this episode. It's the middle of July. Um, I think I mentioned last in the previous episode that Jack just had his 14th birthday, um, which in a lot of states is officially transition aged. Uh, The federal law says that students with disabilities must be invited to their IEP, their annual IEP meetings at the age of 16 and older. And in some states, they make it even earlier at 14. And so I thought to celebrate that, today we would talk about future forward advocacy. I always say that the time to start planning transition is yesterday. Yes, I say that to preschool parents. I say that to parents in the hospital. Seriously, the time to plan for adulthood is yesterday. Now, Before I say anything else, I want for you to also know that the best advice that I ever got in my entire life in any situation came from my dad, who about 10 days into Jack's life was in my bedroom. Jack was sleeping in a little pack and play next to my bed, and I was chilling out in my bed. And I don't know if it was like the day that we got confirmation that he actually had Down syndrome, which was not necessarily like we knew he had Down syndrome. Or maybe we were, like, going to the cardiologist. It was a day that, like, something major was happening. And my dad said, hang on a second. Everything with Jack is going to be, like, 10% more. It's going to be 10% harder, 10% more complicated, 10% more. But he said, look at that baby right now. That baby is sleeping. He's eating well. He's doing all the bathroom things he's supposed to be doing. He is adorable. He is okay. And if you just focus on the now, then everything's going to be okay. And I go back to the it so, so, so often. It is also probably important to tell you that my dad's literal favorite song is a Jimmy Buffett song that is called I Love the Now. But Living in the present is a really good coping strategy, especially if you are a type A control freak planner like me. However, planning is extremely important for our kids with disabilities. And forward thinking, future forward advocacy is really important. So I thought I would tell you a little story. So we just had a family dinner, which happens... Oh, I don't know. At least twice a week during the regular times and a little bit more often in the summertime because Griffin's practice schedule is a little bit earlier in the day, even if he has a double. Like sometimes we can still have a family dinner if he has an afternoon or evening practice. But we are having a lot of family dinners right now because swimming is kind of winding down. And so it's one of my favorite things because I love the way that my kids interact together. Like the true sibling experience today, I said something like, isn't Jack cute or isn't he funny or something? And Griffin's like, no. And I mean, as much as I didn't like that, I also think that's important. But that's not why I'm telling you this. Now I'm rambling. So Jack had gotten a gift card for his birthday to this ice cream place that we like here in Cincinnati. It's called Grater's. And it is his favorite place to get, oh, you know, I just realized something. Total squirrel moment. But my coffee mug, I really love this one. And it had a crack and it's leaking. I think it might be leaking. I think the crack might have leaked all the way through because I've had to wipe off my 
my desk a couple of times. Ripped coffee cup. That was, it lived a nice life. And it's so adorable. Thank you for going an ADHD journey with me. Okay. So, um, anyway, Jack had a gift card to a ice cream place that he got for his birthday. And he said, can I go get ice cream? And we said, no, you get ice cream on Fridays. And he said, can I go get ice cream? And we said, no, you get ice cream on Fridays. And then he showed us a picture of the app. Can I go get ice cream? And we said, no, you get ice cream on Fridays. And he said, if I eat all my Brussels sprouts, can I get ice cream? And we said, no, you get ice cream on Fridays. And then he did this adorable thing that we think is hilarious. But also like, oh, here's the future forward part. Uh, well, here's one future forward part. So Jack had apraxia, has apraxia, and pretty significant expressive language stuff. And so, you know, when he was growing up, if he said it, he got it. Like if he said chocolate ice cream, we were going to go get chocolate ice cream because that's a lot of syllables. And then it became if he says, I please want chocolate ice cream, then we would go get it. But regardless, we would go get chocolate ice cream. So now he still thinks if he says it, he gets it. And we're like, no, you can't have chocolate ice cream every time you say it. That would be like close to 400 times a day. So he taps out the syllables. He'll say, he'll like pound and he'll say, chocolate ice cream. It's so cute and it's so funny. And so Griffin, so the first future forward thing is if your speech therapist or a behaviorist suggests that kind of parenting, I personally seriously would advise against it because it was, it's, it's hard to, to break. It's a hard habit to break. And I kind of knew we were creating a monster, but I was going with it. Okay. And Jack has a very strong personality. So that's part of it too. But Griffin said, Jack, if you can figure out a way to get there, it's your money, you can spend it, but none of us are taking you there. And I was like, okay, first of all, please don't encourage elopement because he could not leave the house by himself. Second of all, what does that mean? Like Jack is always, Jack would eat you out of house right now. Ritalin and autoimmunity sometimes give him no appetite, but at the moment he has a very big appetite. And so if we just let him eat everything he wanted to eat, he would live on Reese cups, chocolate milkshakes, chocolate ice cream, and stuff like that. And so I said to Griffin, I was like, listen, here's the deal is like we can't, he might always need help with calorie consumption and healthy eating and that kind of thing. And right now we're laying the foundation for that and we're teaching him those things. Um, but we can't teach him that if you, like you can spend your money however you want because he would be a 500 pound guy that wouldn't be able to get out of his house if he did that. Um, and he was like, oh, okay, good point. Future forward, right? Like, I mean, you could drive yourself thinking, drive yourself crazy thinking like, oh, what's this going to do to my kid? probably going to cause damage in the future. But it's really important to be future forward and to think about those things. So Harry told you I was going to keep the summer podcast short and now we're eight minutes in and I'm just now finished with the little ditty that I thought would last two minutes. But I had my coffee cup, coffee cup situation. So let's get into it. So what I want to talk about is ways to be future forward. I just want to create a list in your mind of things for you to be thinking about. I think the most important is employment. I think the time to start thinking about what would my child do well in an employment situation and what supports would they need in employment is now. And I think it's super important for them to have employment as teenagers or employment-like opportunities. It might be watering the plants for neighbors. It might be baking with you and delivering it to people. It might be stuffing envelopes for a political campaign, working in a, a, food, a food bank or anything else that's kind of like assembly line like that, like um, folding the T-shirts for your organization's walk, you know, your buddy walk or whatever. Super duper important to start looking at those skills and looking at those things. So I am constantly thinking about industries where I think Jack would do a good job. 
and I'm thinking about his profile, you know, where they're like right now, where could he work where there's little demand, where there's little unexpected social pressures? Where could he work where he ha- where he could tune into these interests? You know, he, he loves sports. He loves swimming. So like maybe he could work at a pool or maybe he could work for the Cincinnati Reds or maybe he could work for blah, blah, blah. Where, what employers are doing a good job at employing people with profiles similar to your child's? So I think employment is the most obvious future forward thing. But I also think that it is it probably the hardest from supporting my clients that have transition-aged kids or adults as well as um, friends. And so I think it's super-duper important. Um, and then after you do that, you got to build the relationships, right? Like, I don't think that Jack would do very well working at the moment, working for a big corporation. So I need to start building relationships with small businesses um, to see if maybe there's seasonal work, maybe whatever. But um, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Okay. Another big future forward thing is independent living. And I just gave one piece of that in my example, right? The financial planning aspect to independent living and the nutritional planning aspect to independent living. What skills and and let's see soft skills let's call them what hard skills and soft skills does your child need in order to live independently and what habits are you creating now at the age of 5 10 12 18 that are going to help promote healthy independent living so i think independent living is another super big important topic that we should be thinking about. And, you know, if your child has a touch of ADHD and maybe dyslexia, I think that you should still be thinking about these things, right? Like I had all kinds of clients that have ADHD that really struggle with their first jobs. They really struggle with the scheduling aspect of it. When when am I working? How do I ask off for certain dates? How do I remember what dates I need off? How do I remember to go into the app or onto the bulletin board or whatever to ask off? All of those things. That is super good stuff to practice, right? So maybe when they're in elementary school, you give them a little more autonomy over their schedules so that they're kind of building into those skills. Transportation. So is your child going to drive? What skills do they need to drive? My Griffin is 17, and I would say for about the last four or five years, I have talked on and off about my driving. You know, as I'm pulling out someplace or I'm parallel parking or I observe a dangerous driving pattern in front of me or behind me or something, I'm talking about my driving because I wanted him to observe driving. I wanted him to be a defensive driver. And so I was talking about that. Maybe transportation is public transit. Maybe it is private transit. Maybe it is relationships in order to get from place to place with, you know, a peer that can drive you. Whatever it is, what skills do we need to be building now in order to do that? And then we have health. And in health, I'm talking about physical health, but I'm also talking about social emotional health. So physical health, you know, how are we making decisions regarding your health? Who's helping us make those decisions? Who's in charge here? What factors are we looking at? What are your values around your health? How do we establish those patterns so that you can be as independent in in navigating your health as possible? One pattern that I really like to hammer at my house is reliance on our pediatrician. We adore our pediatrician. Both of my kids love him very, very much. And I will oftentimes say, you know what, I don't know, but let me text Dr. Charlie and ask him. Or, you know, Dr. Charlie says blah, 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 because I want for them to know that I very much trust our doctors and that I feel comfortable asking questions of the doctor and that I put the doctor as part of our decision-making team. 
And I want to set that example for my kids. I think that's really healthy decision making. But that's my value. Your value might be different than that. And then social emotional decision making. How are we setting our kids up at the age of three, five, 10, 12, definitely 14 for healthy social emotional lives? How are we teaching them coping skills? How are we building into the things that they're need to they're going to need to have as adults i am seeing a lot a lot of kids that are really struggling with coping i think the pandemic really impacted that and i think it also we've we're having more and more kids that are getting diagnosed with ADHD, maybe that's because we're talking about it more. Maybe it is because of COVID. Maybe it's something to do with what's happening at schools or happening at home. Maybe it's because kids are really involved in sports. Whatever it is, I am seeing a lot of kids that are having a really hard time coping with minor little stresses. And so I really think it's important that We as parents build into our kids with coping skills, even for the most minor of things. And that we model them ourselves, right? Like I tend to not be able to handle any kind of stress after about 8.30 p.m. And I don't think I'm modeling super good stress management as a result. But I talk about it and... I I acknowledge it and I'll, I'll apologize if I need to walk away or whatever. So that social emotional component to it, we need to be aware of like, what's my child going to need based on where they are now? And I think that's super important. So these are more just things that I would suggest to get your mind going about future planning and about the process. So I hope this helps. I will see you next week. Same time, same place.